G'day, in this video we're going to be talking about three minerals you really need to pay attention to to ensure you have good plant defense against um, pests and disease. If you're new to this channel, my name is Till Simmons. I work with farmers uh, in Australia to improve their farms regeneratively. Um, I use practices like this so we can cut out a lot of our pesticides um, while maintaining overall you know, good quality uh, produce. So the three minerals are calcium, silicon, and uh, boron and I'll touch on exactly why um, each of these play a massive role in our plant's defense and ultimately these three have a synergistic effect together on the cell wall. Now the cell wall is very important as it creates a physical barrier to prevent um, pathogens from entering into the cell and so it's super important to make sure that our cell walls in our plants are super strong. So the first one calcium. Calcium Calcium forms um, effectively a reinforcement in the cell wall. It forms to pectins, so um, these little compounds, think of them kind of like this. Without calcium, they form, uh, that they, they have a very poor form. It creates a very soft and fluid cell wall, um, allowing effectively a fungal pathogen to land onto the cell wall and then put their um, hyphae into the plant. We don't want that. So what we want is we want our calcium there to bond these pectins together in a rigid form, strengthening the cell wall and protecting the inside of our cells and our plants. So that's the first one, calcium. On our differential sap test, um, we look at having a luxury amount of calcium in our plants. Calcium is so important. We want to make sure that we have high levels and um, ensuring that we don't have any deficiencies. And if you want to hear more about differential sap test analysis, uh, we have a whole video about that uh, on our YouTube, so go check it out. Next is silicon. Silicon is um, a, a really interesting uh, non-essential plant nutrient. It's, as I said, it's non-essential, which means technically the plant doesn't have to have it, but it's very beneficial if it does. Uh, the, the study on uh, silica is quite unknown, um, and... I, so I have these two books, so uh, Mineral Nutrition of Higher Plants, fantastic book, I uh, highly recommend it. It's quite thick, it's just a classic textbook, outlining everything about uh, minerals and plants. But then also the Great Green Book of uh, Mineral Nutrition and Plant Diseases, which I got a lot of this information from. In both of these books, um, which are kind of the standard for nutrition, uh, they actually don't have too many references for silica and they highlight that in the books but from the studies that they have in the textbooks they sh they effectively say that the silica forms a silica gel or what's really cool a biogenic opal which is a mineral formed inside like it's, it's a also yeah a mineral formed inside the cell wall that strengthens the cell wall and so when say a uh, rust um, fungal pathogen uh, lands onto our, uh, or spore lands onto our plants and germinate. It can't, once, when we have a high amount of silica, a luxury level of silica in our plants, it can't get its hyphae into the plant um, cell, um, effectively protecting it. Now, there's a, there's a number of different references in uh, the books that suggest that it actually inhibits um, uh, the, germina uh, the germination of the spores, as well as a few other things. Um, overall, silica is really important for uh, increasing a plant's tolerance to biotic and abiotic stress. Very important. Um, a lot of the times our plants are deficient in silica. Not too many people actually test for it because it's not uh, essential. We test for it. It's very important. Uh, you can get foliar sprays, but also with silica is quite correlated to soil health. So the, the uh, increased, uh, the better your soil health, the better your silica uptake is. Finally, we have boron. Boron has uh, a few different functions in terms of for uh, cell wall formation. Number of different references in the book. Um, so there's the effect it has on cell walls itself. Deficient um, plants in boron tend to have very weak and fragile cell walls. Um, the second effect it has is its effect on calcium and silica. Boron is considered to be a translocator of minerals and nutrition. It's very important to have boron, otherwise you get a buildup of nutrients in one particular spot. 
Ensuring that we have boron allows for the flow of calcium and silica throughout the plant, especially into our cell walls. And so when we're thinking about these three minerals and thinking about how we can use them synergistically on our farm, if we're applying, if we're gonna apply any of these, we'll apply them all together because we're gonna get a synergistic effect between them. Some of the references in the book talk about how um, rice and wheat and other cereals gain a 50% uh, increase in its resistance to um, a lot of fungal pathogens. So 50% increase is, is pretty good. Um, in some cases, it was actually um, better than the uh, fungicides used. So something that we work with growers uh, to do is applying these. So we take a differential sub test, which is the top and bottom uh, leaf, comparing the uh, concentrations of our minerals in those leaves to each other to predict oncoming deficiencies as well as determine exactly what that plant has in it right now. Um, and so we use those to see what levels of these we have in our plants and apply um, usually follow applications to correct those um, so that we don't have to apply fungicides and other pesticides into the future. So if that sounds like uh, something up your alley and you're keen to use less fungicides and pesticides and rather use uh, nutrition, get in contact with me for a 30 minute consultation. Uh, we can go over some of that. Awesome. Uh, Thanks for watching. My name is Teal Simmons from AgriSoil. Cheers.